Happy Halloween! <laughs> what the f <laughs>absolutely fucking not fuck that why would you take the kid to investigate why would you i don't understand taking the baby to view the, the little guy that was poking up out the corner uh, where's that right right up this is difficult right around there it's fucking hard to do uh yeah fuck that dude this video is gonna suck dude like not for you but like for me because it's just all creepy halloween shit all the stuff that i hate so much <laughs>
What is that? Get, get back. Get back. Yeah, yeah, get back. Did everyone hear that? Wow, creepy or what? Yeah. In the moonlight Okay, so seriously, I hope it's not the case. I hope dogs aren't actually human-esque because my dogs over the years have seen me do some weird shit. They've seen me watch some weird shit. They've watched me act like an idiot. And the last thing I need is to be judged by a dog who I thought was just a fucking dog. To back down easily. So he decides to capture it on camera to prove to the world that he's being haunted. Hello? Hello? Shit. And then he sees it, right there in the room. You can even see the shadow of someone walking. Nope, absolutely not. I'm blasting. I'm straight blasting in that door. No possible way that I am going to live in a house where lights are turning themselves on and I got ghosts in the fucking rooms. It's just not going to happen. Did you hear that? Nope. Nope. What the hell is that? This footage shows a man being attacked in the middle of the woods by what he claims were elf-like creatures known as duende. Things take an even stranger turn at the end. Suddenly, he cries out in fear as small humanoid figures seem to lunge towards him from the trees. He runs while the creatures give chase. Panicked, the man attempts to flee his tiny pursuers, but the duendes continue their relentless assault. He was able to climb up into a tree used for hunting. Just as the footage is about to cut out, the duendes mysteriously transform into goat-like animals. The terrified man escapes to share his bizarre story. He believes the duendes lured him deep into the forest before revealing their true monstrous nature once he was isolated and alone. What did this poor guy capture on camera? A real shape-shifting duende attack? Let me know your theories on what these creatures could be. This chilling found footage will give you goosebumps. Oi, oi, oi. 
Bro, you're getting punked out by some midgets with some sticks. I'll jump out of that tree and beat their little asses. I'm just telling you, man. It's like Bruce Lee, just flying kick. Just boom. It's weird. The contrast of this mask makes my camera focus differently. Now it's dark and Halloween again, baby. There's this urban legend, a smiling man. People say if you walk alone at night, you might see him just standing there, smiling, following you. I thought it was a joke, until last night. I was walking home late when I noticed someone ahead. He was standing under a streetlight, facing me, smiling. His smile was too wide, like it didn't belong on his face. I kept walking, telling myself to stay calm. But every time I glanced up, he was closer just standing there, grinning like he knew something I didn't. My chest tightened. I crossed the street, picked up the pace, but he followed, his footsteps completely silent. I looked back, and he was just gone. Relief washed over me for a second. Then I felt a cold breath on my neck. I froze. That's when I heard it, right behind me. You smiled back. I didn't just see a fucking hand. You mad or what? You mad I threw that fucking helmet at you? Do it again. Make some noise. Show me your fucking reel, pussy. Fuck your fucking island. Show me. Fucking Satan ass motherfucker. Show me. Prove to me that you're fucking real. Do it, pussy. What, you mad? Show me. Swing some shit. Make them noises and shit that you did when I'm fucking, when you woke me up. Do it. Do it, pussy. Do it. Oh my fucking gosh, bro. Bro. Hey! Hey, chill the fuck out. Cut that shit off. Stop. Fuck up. Bro, so... It was opening doors. That's one thing. That's creepy. Sure. But once that shit started growling... Nah, man. I'm out. I'm going AWOL. I'm going AWOL at that point. It was late October... I was a sophomore at university and lived in my dorm room with a girl named Kylie. She was a good roommate, everything considered, though we didn't always talk much. She was very social and I was more closed off. 
Come Halloween weekend, though, she invited me to come to a party with her at a friend's house. She really thought I'd have fun and maybe make some new friends. Plus, it was at an actual house, so I wouldn't be cramped up in a dorm room all night. I initially rejected the offer, but after a bit of convincing, I decided to go. I picked up a really awful looking ghost costume at Spirit Halloween, and at 8, Kylie ordered an Uber to drop us off at her friend's place. It was about 10 minutes from campus, but this wasn't a very big town, so it felt like we were in a whole new area. It was basically an empty road, with just this one large house on it. There were orange lights strung all over the outside, and tons of blow-up Halloween decorations. We headed inside, and it was surprisingly not that crowded. There were maybe 10 or 15 people around my age. Anyway, we drank and played some games for several hours. It was actually kind of fun, and I was happy I went. By 1am though, I was tired and burnt out. I found Kylie and asked if she wanted to go, but she was too drunk and said she was just going to spend the night. I didn't feel comfortable enough with any of the others to ask for a ride, especially since they were drunk and mostly all dudes. I stood outside while trying to figure out what to do. I opened up the Uber app, but I really wasn't trying to spend $30 for a 10 minute ride, not to mention I probably barely even had $30 in my bank account. I was definitely a little tipsy too, which certainly fogged my judgment. I ended up saying screw it, and decided I could just walk back to campus. A 10 minute car ride must be like a 35 to 40 minute walk, or at least that's what I thought. I headed down the road, leaving the bright lights of the house, and very quickly getting into the barren, dark, and eerie section of the road. The street lights were spread out really far, so I'd be in the light for a minute, then walk in the dark for several minutes before reaching the next light. It was pretty soon into the walk though that I noticed a car behind me. It was odd because it seemed like they were parked on the side of the road, which I know I never walked past them, but every few minutes when I'd look back, they had moved further down the road toward me. I tried to keep an eye on them, but at one point I looked back and had suddenly lost sight of them. It was a bit foggy out, but I don't know where they went, Maybe they turned around. I kept walking, but increasingly got more uneasy, feeling like I was being watched from somewhere. Five minutes went by as I kept walking along the side of the road before I heard a car engine behind me. I turned around and saw a car coming through the fog and their headlights were off. They were slowing down too and came rolling to a stop right beside me. There was a man in the front seat with a patchy beard and a strange smile. Where are you heading? It's a bit late to be walking out here alone. I just said I was okay and kept on walking, but the man inched forward in the car, matching my pace and staying right beside me. I'll give you a lift. You really shouldn't be out here. He yelled through his window, but through his voice, I could tell there was something different about him. As I started to say no thanks, I looked over at him. His smile was gone, and his face was tense. His eyes stared at me with an aggression, like he wasn't giving me a choice. I stuttered over my words as the man suddenly stopped the car and swung his door open. He started quickly getting out, and just then, a pair of headlights broke through the fog. Another car was coming down the road. I sprinted to the middle of the street and started waving my arms for them to stop, and the creepy man went right back into his car. As the other cars started to slow down, the man sped away. It turned out to be one of the guys from the party on his way home. Though I only recognized his face, I didn't even know his name. I told him what happened, and he gave me a lift back to campus. I don't think I'd ever sobered up faster than when that guy jumped out of his car, but honestly, if nobody had come to help, I probably would have been on the missing persons list right now, with zero evidence on where I could be. Yeah, that's the... Uh... I mean, it's probably one of the creepier stories because that shit happens all the time, right? Um, I obviously don't get messed with really ever when I'm walking around. I'm a bigger dude, have tattoos and shit, so I'm, I don't think I'm somebody's first target normally. But, I mean, you hear about that happening all the time. Like cars pulling up and harassing people and trying to get them to come in the car with them, trying to force them to go in the car with them. Like, you really got to be careful. You got to carry some weapons. You got to walk with friends. You got to stay off of... You know, dark alleys and streets, you know, dark streets, walking alone. I know it could be hard, you know, living in a city and walking everywhere, but 
just gotta look over your shoulder man and, and keep yourself out of those situations and make you an easy target back in the 60s my dad worked as a guard at a prison near miami he described his most memorable experience to me recently he said that there was one prisoner who was a lot like young hannibal lecter very calm but very menacing he always kept his cool no matter what but there was something threatening about him well one day young lecter was able to start a riot on his cell block purely by motivating the other prisoners into a frenzy he didn't participate in the riot at all but he got every other prisoner to start a fit in their cell. My dad and a few other guards were called down to the cell block to quiet them all down. He says that when he got down there, every prisoner was screaming and throwing themselves against the walls of their cells, and shouting profanity and insults to the guards. That is, every prisoner except Lecter. He was the only quiet one on the whole block. My dad came up to close his cell, and this guy was standing near the back with his hands folded, staring my dad directly in the eye, and muttering a random sequence of numbers with a strange smile on his face. My dad stood there, trying to figure out what the numbers meant. Then it finally hit him. The prisoner was reciting my dad's home phone number on repeat. Nope. Nope, nope. Creepy dolls are a no-go for me, my friend. Uh, no. I, I hate them ever since I was a kid, and I got freaked out by the Chucky commercial. Nah. Dolls are... <laughs> hard pass. Hard pass on the dolls. Hard pass on the creepy dolls. It's like a creepy smile. Oh. 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 Amy's face appears to distort into a horrifying gaping maw. Her mouth opens up to such an impossible extent that the investigators believe that they might have captured a paranormal transfiguration. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's, uh. It's fucking weird. I don't like that. Mm hmm. Do not like that. Someone needs to tell that ghost it's uh, playing with fire right there, buddy. That's assault, brother. I heard you don't believe in ghosts. Let me change that for you. I'm getting ready to show you a ghost in this picture right here, but here's a little backstory. This picture was submitted by one of my followers out of Missouri. 
and he lives in a house that was built in 1897. And I know you can't tell much right now, but I really going to want you to focus on just inside this little green box in a moment. This was taken from his security camera, which is upstairs. He and his wife stay downstairs and they just use, I guess, the upstairs for storage and extra space. But here in just a moment, I'm gonna zoom in for you and show you what's actually in that green box. It's one of the greatest catches I've ever seen. I want you to look now, right here in that green box, you can see this is a full body apparition. You can make out the arms, the head, the face. It appears that this spirit has a long dark colored dress on. This is unbelievable. There was absolutely no one upstairs when this was captured and he has no explanation. He actually sent it to me hoping maybe I could help him out. But I mean, he's living in a haunted house. You got squatters, bro. You got a homeless man living in your attic that wears skirts. <laughs> the worst kind. <laughs> I can fix her. I'm Savannah. And it is our two year anniversary. Officially two years. Uh, we've been dating for two years, but we've known each other forever. You didn't just see something come in here? For Stan. I uh, I won't break them. <laughs> Michelle's getting like really good at the drums. So you might have some competition when you get back. <laughs> we love you. We'll see you soon. The dogs are ready for bed. It's just a peaceful night here. Can't really go to bed myself. What the fuck is that? What? Oh God! Fuck! <laughs> nope. <laughs> I feel like, all right, I feel like, I don't know, I've seen enough horror movies that if you're looking and recording in a mirror, you're just asking for trouble. You're just, you're just asking for it. And who the fuck has a mirror on both ends of the hallway? Just like an infinity mirror in your hallway? You're going to see some weird shit. Maybe not act, like actual ghost person walking across the hall into a bedroom type of weird shit, but you're going to see some weird shit. But that's it for today's video, you guys. Uh, I gotta head out and do Halloween stuff. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys for checking out the video, hanging out with me. Hope you had fun. I did. Uh, I'm actually able to sleep for the next four days now. But uh, enjoy your holiday. Let me know in the comments what you're going as for Halloween, what's your costume, and what are you doing tonight. And uh, stay safe. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>